What about olfactory group meningiomas? So these are meningiomas that are a little more anterior. Uh, they're in the area of the olfactory nerve. And traditionally they're removed with a craniotomy. That's just showing you an example uh, of taking these out through a craniotomy. And if you look at this report, this is a hundred olfactory group meningiomas removed through a craniotomy. And they look at their complication rates. They actually have pretty high 14% rate of brain swelling, 10% rate of bleeding in the brain, almost 4% rate of death. Uh, and they don't even look at anosmia as a potential risk, right? And you're talking about a tumor that's around the olfactory nerves and they don't even consider anosmia a risk because they just assume everyone's gonna get anosmia. So just keep that in the back of your mind. There was now then a report of people trying to take out these meningiomas through the nose. And we tried it as well, but this was one of the largest series, 50 patients. And their results, this is a very good center. Their results were not so great. Length of surgery, nine hours, length of stay in the hospital, 11 days. Um, thir a third of patients needed reoperations, uh, a third to repair CSF leak, a third to take out more tumor. Gross total resection rates, if the tumors were greater than four centimeters was low, um, about you know, only 45%. And post-op anosmia was 100%, which really is not so great. So here are those complications. CSF leak, 30%, respiratory failure, 8%, hydrocephalus, 6%, brain abscess, 6%. And even CSF leak, when you look at before and after they started using azacephal flaps, it really didn't make much of a difference. So the question then becomes, which of these two cases is better for endonasal? And the answer is neither. Sorry about the phone, because the one on the left is gonna have their sense of smell intact. Olfaction is gonna be completely intact. And if you take it out through the nose, they're gonna lose their sense of smell, even though you could do it. The one on the right is too big, you're not gonna get the whole tumor out. And even though they may not have their sense of smell since such a big tumor, um, you're gonna have a subtotal resection. And sense of smell is really important because your sense of taste is also in integrally related to your sense of smell. So if you look at the rates of olfactory, olfactory preservation, olfaction preservation with endonasal surgery, it's essentially 0%. But if you do a craniotomy, you can save olfaction about half the time. And particularly if they have pre-op olfaction intact, it's 85% preservation. And if their tumor is less than four centimeters, 80%. So if you compare craniotomy to endonasal, or olfactory group in geomas, Transcranial gross total resection rates are 90%, endonasal 70%, no matter what time era you look at. CSF leak rates 11% for transcranial, 30% for endonasal, it really didn't get that much better. Visual improvement might be a little bit better, um, but anosmia is much worse. So we do a, a poorer job of preserving nerve function as opposed to the other cases where we did a better job of it and the complications are higher. So I don't like to do endonasal surgery for olfactory group meningiomas, but I do like to use a minimally invasive approach and that's a little eyebrow incision. And you can make an incision in the eyebrow, do a little craniotomy, come in from the side. Uh, and what I did was I, I actually first started doing endonasal surgery and I did six cases and I really was not happy with the results. So I started using an eyebrow and I compared the results of those 12 cases, six and six. And my gross total resection rate with the eyebrow incision was 100% and with endonasal was 50%. Anosmia was only 50%, 57% with eyebrow incision and 100% with endonasal. My complications were zero with an eyebrow incision and 16.7% with endonasal. So all I, I abandoned the endonasal approach. If you're worried about the cosmetics, this woman gave us permission to use her picture. She had an eyebrow incision. You can't even tell which side she had it on, um, but it was here. You can see maybe a very, very thin scar. Here's another woman, very, very thin scar. So how do we take out a big tumor like this just going through someone's eyebrow? Well, after you make the incision, um, you have to drill off the roof of the orbit and you take off the rim of the orbit and you open up the dura and you do retract the brain, but you can only retract it very little because um, there's such a small opening. You get right to the tumor, you internally debulk the tumor. You can take out the majority of the tumor with your microscope, but then you get to a point where you can only see so much. And then you have to put the endoscope in. And if you put the endoscope in through the eyebrow incision, you can see the residual tumor that's down in the cribriform plate. And you can get the rest of the tumor out with angled instruments and an endoscope. So here's the post-op MRI scan. So these are some of our results, 17 patients, um, tumor volume, 
pretty big. Um, let me just move this. I think it's blocking here. Um, flare volume didn't really change. So the rain retraction was not high. There was a little bit of DWI, so we do you know, cause a bit of injury, but much less than if we did a craniotomy. Length of stay was three days instead of um, the large length of stay you get with an endonasal approach. We had 11 patients with greater than two years follow-up. There were two recurrences, <clears throat> but it's very easy to manage those recurrences. One just with stereotactic radiosurgery, so the patient didn't even require another surgery. And one had tumor going down into the nose that really needed another surgery to get that out. New post-op anosmia, only 20%. So we did very well with preserving uh, the sense of smell. So the limitation with doing the eyebrow incision is you can't drill out the cribriform plate, but you don't really need to. You can treat it with stereotactic radiosurgery. And if you look at the results of stereotactic radiosurgery, uh, this is tumor progression, only 5% um, if you do radiation. And causing anosmia with radiation is also very low, zero, zero cases in this case series. So we published another article looking at our uh, algorithm for which minimally invasive approach to use for anterior skull-based meningiomas. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you liked that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.